This is Fair Issues on the Faircast. This week's article is entitled, Challenging Issues and Keeping the Faith Part 2, by Michael R. Ash, read by Stephen Densley, Jr. This and other articles by Michael Ash can be found at mormontimes.com. This article was used by permission of the author and Mormon Times. Most faithful members feel their testimony wouldn't falter if they heard something negative about the church. It has been observed, however, that some stalwart members with real testimonies have fallen away and continue to fall away because of information that conflicts with how they understand the gospel, scripture, revelation, prophets and prophecy, or church history. Having periods of doubt isn't a sin and isn't abnormal. Statistics show that while 95% of Americans believe in God, nearly half, including those who consider themselves to be religiously devout, seriously question their faith from time to time. President David O. McKay said that doubts shook him as a young man, and for many years he was skeptical of the gospel. Later in life, as he engaged in the work of the Lord, he finally had a spiritual confirmation of the restored gospel. Thankfully, the church umbrella is large enough to include those who struggle with sporadic or chronic doubt. To some, reveal the Lord, it is given to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. To others, it is given to believe on their words, that they also might have eternal life if they continue faithful. Joseph F. Smith once said that Latter-day Saints are given wide latitude for their convictions. If they are moral, believe the main principles, and exhibit a little faith, they are still welcome within the church, even though they may not believe all that has been revealed. While some members can remain active through episodes of sporadic or prolonged doubt, other members may find that their doubts feed cynicism or criticism and can become stumbling blocks to a spiritual testimony. With today's technology, potential stumbling blocks are often an innocent click away. Prior to the Internet, Most active Mormons rarely purchased anti-LDS literature. Today, however, anti-Mormon propaganda is easily accessed on the web. To make matters worse, a member may innocently and unintentionally stumble upon LDS critical material while doing research for a lesson or talk. Some LDS sites are subtle and appear to offer legitimate information about the church or church history. Before a member is able to discern the site's agenda, he or she may have already digested a number of claims that call their faith into question. Anti-LDS authors often tend to use a strategy of, if you throw enough mud, some of it will stick. Making charges is easy. Understanding all the issues can take more time and space. Thus, members may be overwhelmed by negativity and start thinking, if even 10% or 1% of this is true, I have a problem. The Internet has been called the Great Equalizer because it brings so many different things to people all over the world at all economic levels. Critics of the Church claim that the Internet has pulled away the curtain that has hidden the problems with Mormonism. While it's true that the Internet makes vast amounts of information available to people all over the globe, it's a fallacy to think that all information on the web is equal in quality. Some articles are written by intelligent and informed authors, others by uninformed or angry authors, or those who purposefully bear false witness. Search engines don't rank sites by the quality of the research, but rather by popularity or even according to who pays the most to have their sites listed at the top of the heap. Unfortunately, few of us have time to dig through all the many links on a topic, and too often, people tend to believe those things that they read. The many examples of internet myths and urban legends, even LDS urban myths, that spread like wildfire from email to email, suggest that too many people are quick to accept, without critical examination, rumors and outlandish stories. How does one distinguish the good information from the bad? With better education. The next installments will discuss the defense of the faith. Future installments will engage the mindset and issues that can create stumbling blocks to testimony, as well as sources for the better education that can add secular convictions to our spiritual testimonies. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book, Of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Both books are available for purchase online through the Fair Bookstore. Questions or comments about this episode can be sent to podcast at fairlds.org or join the conversation at fairblog.org. 
Tell your friends about us and help increase the popularity of this podcast by rating it in iTunes. Music for this episode was provided courtesy of Lawrence Green. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or affair.